Hey everyone, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing. We're going to continue. <laughs> we just finished the sew along and um, I need to finish stitching butter, butter, uh, bumblebees two, three, and four. So here's bumblebee number one or bee number one. Let's go ahead and load up for, uh, let's go ahead and do bee number three. I know I'm jumping out of order. But that's going to have the same background stitching as Bumblebee 1. So all I need to do from this screen is to hit return. That will take me to my previous screen. And I'm going to separate these out. And I still want that, but I'm going to get rid of this B. So I'm just going to hit delete. Okay. And then I'm going to add. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add. And we are going to add... B3, and you just have to remember what you've stitched and what you haven't stitched. And I want these to be perfectly on top of each other, so I'm going to go edit, move, center. Let's do that one. And let's go ahead and say OK. Embroidery. And the first thing it wants to do is our placement line. Now we have to pay attention to where we're going to place this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this button right here. We could use either of these, but I'll use this one. And I want to go my top left corner. So that's where my top left corner is. Of course, I don't want it there. I want it over here somewhere. So I'm going to go OK on my screen, layout and move. And now I'm using my move keys. And, and that's my top left corner. Let's check my other points. I'm going to go back here and I'll check my top middle, top right. So that's my top left. That's my top middle. That's my top right. That's my middle left. So I think we should be good to go. And I can just say, okay. And first thing it's going to do is it's going to do a placement line for my batting. I've already sprayed all my batting pieces. color for this doesn't matter. I'm going to lay that down. Remember the bumpy side goes down. I'm going to hit start and get your scissors so you can trim that up. I'm going to go ahead and trim. And if you want, we can do some stuff to save some time. We don't have to do the placement line for the next, for the uh, background fabric. We could just go ahead, skip that stitch, place our fabric, and do the tack down. All right, I am gonna change my thread color out. Do that. And I'm gonna get my background piece. I'm just going to kind of center it to this. If you want, you could fold it in quarters. That way you know where your center is and you can just lay it down. The other thing you're going to want to do is I'm going to, because I didn't do a placement stitch for my background, I'm going to skip that. So I'm going to go here. That's placement for your background. That's the tack down. We'll go ahead and do that stitch. Here's the tack down for my background fabric. I 
I'm going to do the quilting. Same color. This is the orange peel. And then we're going to go ahead and do the embroidery. are going to do um, we're gonna skip the next step I'm looking at my screen and it's showing me a placement stitch for my background but we already have our background so we're gonna go here that's the tack down for the background we don't need that but we are gonna start with those antenna and let me go ahead and load my color I'm using this dark 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 gray you could use black too This is going to be the head and the antenna. going to be the wings. Go ahead and take this color out. We put the cream in. This is a placement stitch for the mylar. Now you want to put your mylar down. After you do this, then we're going to do the satin stitch. We're going to remove the rest of the mylar and satin stitch around it. Okay, so peel back that 
mylar I like to pull into the embroidery and just go ahead and hit start and it's going to satin stitch around those wings. And then we're going to place our wings Now it's the placement for the wings. So you're going to grab one of those sets of wings that we did in the very beginning of class, the freestanding ones. I'm changing my thread out to gold because after this is going to be the body of the bee. And the wings get placed like this, not like this. So you want them to be pointed up. And all you have to do is kind of hold it there. You don't have to move it around. Next is the placement for the body. I'm just gonna kind of hold it down. Um, I used the wash away for the other one, but I mean, you really don't need it. You're gonna wanna put down one of your gold pieces. This is gonna be the tack down and then get your snips to trim it up. Oops, not the snips I want. Here they are. I use these? No. I want, I want ones I don't see. So I'll just do it with this. Be careful not to snip those wings by accident. If all of a sudden it feels really thick, don't cut through it. Thank you. 
Now it's gonna do the decorative stitch around the body. And you might wanna watch this wing just to make sure he doesn't get scooped coming around. <clears throat> Other than that, you'll be totally fine. And the last thing we're gonna do is we are going to do the little zigzags on the body. Oop, I'm going to have some trimming to do on that. Let's do, I'm gonna start from scratch because now we have to put in a different quilting design. So I'm gonna go home, embroidery, and we are doing B number two, and the design is geometric three, two by two horizontal. So geometric three, and we want two by two horizontal. Two by two. I think this one's horizontal. It looks better that way. So I'm going to go with this. Set. Um, add. And we are adding B number two. Embroidery. We have to place it. I'm going to bring it down to this bottom left corner. And let's just make sure it's not touching anything else. So that's kind of my center. I'm going to go ahead and hit, I mean, I could hit this button too. Top left is right there. Whoops. Look, bottom left. I can move it down a little bit if I want. That's good. I'm good with that. Let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna go ahead and do my placement line for the batting first. My tack down.
All right. I'm going to put my background fabric. And I am going to skip a step. I'm going to fold this into quarters so I get the center, which is right there. And we're going to do the tack down of the background fabric. So I'm going to go right here. That's my placement. That's my tack down. And let's change our thread color too. There's my tack down. I'm gonna use that same color for the quilting. I'm going to skip the next two steps because it's placement and tack down for the background fabric. And my next step is going to be the head and the antenna. So let's put, let's put the black back in, or I'm using that dark charcoal gray. Right, we are set. Go ahead and stitch out that head and those antenna. And then we're gonna do the wings. And then I have three more blocks that are part of the homework for week one. We did a lot of stitching today. Our three hour class turned into almost a five hour class. So I'm gonna skip the next step. The next step is the placement line for the wings. I know about how big they are. So I'm just gonna come right over here. And I'm gonna go to the next step, which is gonna be um, the tack down and the fill, the decorative stitching for the wings. So let's go ahead and put this down right here, and that should be plenty. And I'm going to hit start. Oh, look at that. So I thought I knew where it was going to go. Hang on just a second. Let me go ahead and cut that. And not only that, but I uh, didn't change my thread out. So I will be right back. So this time I have the right color in. I have the right placement. And now we are ready to go. So let me slide my hoop back. Sorry about the hoop. Sorry about the film, the camera arm moving. I'm just going to put this right up there. And let's hit start. And 
And after this, one more to go. Peel this all back. Pull in towards your embroidery. Slide this back, and now it's going to do the satin trim. Whoops! Looks like we are not threaded. Satin trim outline. And then we're gonna get ready to put on the wing. So grab one of your wing sets. I'm going to go ahead and put um, yellow in, or my gold. And the first thing it's going to do is the placement line for the wing. down for the wing. And we're going to go ahead and put this down. The body, so there's a placement line for the body. Let's go ahead and skip that. I'm going to go forward and this is the tack down. trim it. I'm 
We're just kind of cruising along. Can you tell I'm in the mood to like get this one done? I told myself I would get this done tonight. And we've already been stitching for, we stitched about five hours, almost five hours. And then maybe, maybe after dinner I'll do some more, but probably not. Because I have about a million other things to do. Okay, I'm not using the topper. So, because of that, I need to be careful and just make sure this foot doesn't catch under anything. But I think he'll be fine. And the last thing we're gonna do is we are gonna change it back to that dark, dark gray or black, whichever one you're using. And this one's gonna have kind of like cross hatching on his butt, on his bumble butt. Plus I'm getting tired. And if I'm tired, then I might start making mistakes. We don't wanna do that. <clears throat> My favorite embroidery from today was the umbrella. Oh, it's so cute with that vinyl. It's so darn cute. I do love these little bumblebees though. He looks like a little hand grenade, doesn't he? All right. Let's go ahead. We're going to load the last one. So we are just going to say OK. We're going to hit return to go to the previous screen. We're going to separate that out because I want to get rid of him. So I'm going to hit delete. I am going to take this and hit move and send him back to center. Let's hit add. And now we're going to add bumblebee number four. Embroidery. Now we've got to make sure he's placed right. So I could do it one of two ways, but I'm just going to kind of drag him down here in the bottom left. And then we're going to check and make sure that it doesn't interfere with anything. So I'm going to go ahead and we can use either of these. I'll do this one. And I want the top leftmost corner, which is right there. That should just fit. And that's everything. So I could move him down. Could you even see that? I could move him down just the slightest bit and over to the left just a little bit. And we are good. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to leave the color I have in there. This is placement line for the batting. Tack down for the batting. Sure. 
trim the batting. We are going to skip the next step and we are just going to put down our background. There's so much excess, but anyways, we'll fold it in quarters just to get the center and unfold him. And we'll do the tack down. Oops, you know what? Um, you know, I'll just leave it because it's gonna get sewn in anyways, and that's usually our trim line. But the next step is gonna be the quilting. So we definitely need to change that out. And you should have one more pair of bee wings floating around. Right. I'm going to put the dark, dark, dark gray back in. And we're going to skip the next two steps. Good thing I looked at my screen because I was ready to just hit go. That is the placement line for the background and the tack down for the background, and that is what we want. Sometimes I just go autopilot. Right, I am going to use my white and we are going to do the wings. I'm going to skip that step and I'm going to go straight to the mylar because remember, we know where to place it. Well, that should be good like that.
you believe there's 17 steps for these little bumblebees? We are running out of bobbin threads. Let me grab another bobbin. We're so close. I think I could have gotten some more out of that one. Okay, throw away the leftover mylar. And go ahead and hit start. And it's gonna do the satin stitch around the ring wings. I'm going to put gold in. We're going to do the placement for the wings, placement for the body, decorative stitch for the body, and then decorative stitch on the bee butt. And I had my one last set of wings in a really, really safe place. Here they are nervous for a minute. I haven't even been taping this down or anything, just been holding it there. And it's been working out. The 
next step is placement for the body. I'm gonna skip it. So I'm gonna go to the next one and I'm just gonna place this down because we know where the body's gonna go. We know. So if you can skip some of your placement lines, it saves you some time. Let's go ahead and trim that up. Remember, watch out for the wings. You don't want to accidentally cut through those. And now we're going to do the decorative stitch around it. Make sure that your little embroidery foot doesn't scoop underneath that bod on underneath one of those wings. And the last thing we're going to do is get that dark, dark, dark gray for your black. And we're going to do the decorative stitch on the B body. And in this case, I think it's going to be another zigzag. They should have done a polka dotted one, don't you think? Would have been cute. Would have been like a ladybug, but it'd be a lady bee. So I know there's only one queen bee, right? Is that the only female? Every, every other bee is male? Patrick? Are you allowed to talk? <laughs> Patrick's asking if he's allowed to talk. Yes, Patrick. Are there other female bees? That's a lot of pressure. Imagine being the only female on earth. Or the only female in Reno. <laughs> Patrick, what did you say? I can't decide which one is my favorite. Let's go ahead and trim these out now. So, I'm gonna come over here. I was getting ready, just kind of putting everything out there. So for the bees, it wants you to square finish blocks to two and a half by two and a half by cutting along the background tack down line, which I don't recommend because there's a lot of pulling and shifting and moving when you stitch these out. And if you stay right on that line, you are either going to be most likely too small. So let me go and get my two and a half by two and a half. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to cut these apart. We're gonna turn them upside down and press them out first.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a squirt of Best Press from the back. Patrick's doing his domestic diva duties. He's doing his laundry. He's been instructed not to speak unless spoken to. <laughs> He's so good at that, too. She's joking. <laughs> she's joking, but what she's saying is true. Okay, it is true. I don't know if you could hear him, but he was saying, you only think she's joking. And I am, when I'm filming, then he isn't allowed to talk because he is so loud. He walks loud. He breathes loud. Everything is done loudly. And you just want these to sit fat, flat. You don't care where those outside stitches are. Because we're going to go according to the ruler and not those stitch lines. Because you can tell mine have moved. Like, look. You don't want to cut on that. Then you're going to have misshapen bumblebee squares. But you do want to press it out flat. Okay, I'm going to get my rotating mat. Here we go. Make sure it can it can rotate. Make sure that you can rotate freely. And I'm going to trim two sides at a time. Let me get my my ruler and um actually this is what it's two and a half by two and a half so i'm gonna i don't say i'm gonna fussy cut it but i'm going to frame it the best i can be as close to that line as possible that looks good I'm going to give it a cut this direction, a cut this direction. Oop. Oh man, I pulled that, didn't I? Okay, let's get it back online. There we go. Maybe I wasn't as forceful as I should have been. There we go. Better. You remember you're the boss. Just be careful because uh, the bumblebee makes it stick up a little bit, the body. And fluff his wings again, ladies. Let's get those wings nice and high. And then you can trim away all this extra stuff that you don't need. All right, let's do the next one. See, do you hear him? He's so loud. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sore body, being <laughs> sacrificed, moving your stuff and driving your stuff home and doing your laundry isn't good enough for you. <laughs> no, I'd like you to do it quietly. That's all I'm saying. I want you to labor in silence. Okay, I'm trying to push him down on this side. Are we out? And one last cut. It 
it's hard because I can't, I can't push down this side. But he's cute. Look at how cute he is. Two more to go. Just take your time. Don't rush. Haste makes waste. I think I've proven that several times today during the sew along. I don't I just don't want to push my fabric too much. You know when you're doing like a quilt block and you have one of those really thick centers? That's what it feels like. It's pushing everything up. And I'm also using um, creative grid rulers and they're abrasive on the back side. So you don't want it to kind of scratch up your, your embroidery. There we go. And bumblebees are done. All right, ladies. I'm going to be back in a little bit, and we will finish off those umbrellas. 